So far, you've learned about the basic components you need to build layouts using collection views. You know how to create a new Xcode project and add a collection view to it. You know how to create a compositional layout object that combines items, groups, and sections in different ways. You know how to define a diffable data source and provide instructions on how to set up a cell from a collection view with data from the data source. You also know how to define snapshots of the data and apply it to the data source. You can configure prototype cells to display data, and you went even further and learned how to create a custom collection view cell subclass. This is all great stuff, but you've only just begun to scratch the surface of what collection views can do. Before you go much further, we're actually going to take a small detour. Earlier, I mentioned that there are two ways to create layouts using collection views, pre-iOS 13 and the new iOS 13 way. Over the next few videos, let's take a second to get acquainted with the old school way of doing things.